Just to add few more examples from our common observation. Suppose this is a pendulum. It was kept at the mean position. You gave some displacement and it will oscillate. That oscillation dies out. The reason why oscillation dies out is the air molecules around the pendulum. They are hit by this pendulum and they start to gain kinetic energy and the whole surrounding in it in the air molecules billions of air molecules around it in it will start to gain some energy so the energy the potential energy the small amount of potential energy that it has gained that will be diffused that will be spread out in the environment at this position at the knot because of friction there will be some heat dissipated so there will be some heat energy released out here there will be some kinetic energy going into the environment so this energy will be dispersed so this oscillation will die out so this process of the dying out of oscillation is spontaneous it will happen on it itself because in this process the energy is diffused the other way will not happen if the pendulum is at rest suddenly it will not come in motion because to bring it at motion energy from the environment the kinetic energy of all the molecules have to be taken away and that energy has to be bestowed to this pendulum so the pendulum will have some energy but that energy was well dispersed out you have collected the small small kinetic energy from air molecules and you have given sufficient energy to this so that it will have some vibrations plus the heat from these walls have to be taken out so a dispersed energy have to be given to this so reverse will not be spontaneous so we are building up a notion we are gaining confidence in this statement that energy spontaneously tends to flow in the direction in which diffusion dispersal is occurring in the direction in which energy is being spreaded out you have faith in this statement now this is the observation fine so you know you, there are there are other things as well just to add a biological process when we eat food then that food have some chemical energy in it when we eat this the whole chemical energy which was concentrated before is dispersed and that due to oxidation of food there is synthesis of essential compounds and all kind of activities from biochemical to muscular to mental cells requires energy so the energy that was contained in this food is utilized for preparation of various chemicals inside our body that energy is required to feed cells that cells during muscular motion and biochemical processes energy uses cell uses those energies so this energy that was chemical energy was stored in the food that was that is being dispersed out that's why it's a spontaneous process as you eat food the whole system will start doing its job without any external assistance no one have to do anything no machine have to operate on our body our body will do it on its own as you can see there's a wide range of observations in which we observe that energy spontaneously tends to spread out in all the process now this thermodynamic second law is going to encompass all the processes where biological physiological physical planets revolving around the sun any kind of motion any kind of process which is spontaneously happening then this statement have to hold true for that process otherwise that process will not hold will not be spontaneous you can think of any spontaneous process and you can check the validity of this statement whether energy is being dispersed during that process or not fine so once we have established established faith in this observation in this statement now our job now previously now we can answer if someone ask you that why this coffee do not become hot on its own this process is not observable now what's the reason it doesn't become hot on its own now you can answer that because energy is being not dispersed in this process rather energy is being concentrated from the surrounding into this cup that's why it's hot so this process is not spontaneous because in, there is no diffusion of energy in this process rather it's just the opposite so if now we have some uh, tools now we are we 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 can judicially judge whether a process will be spontaneous or not 
Given a process is not sp spontaneous, we can analyze that the energy in that process is not being spread out. That's why that process is not spontaneous. Now that's the mere observation. And all the laws are formed from observations. All of them. All of them you can remember from class 6 that you've stud started studying. All of them comes out from observation. Now this is also observation. The task is to convert this observation into a principle utilizing certain mathematics that will make the whole analysis of any kind of process easier when we deal with numbers. Fine. For example, Newton's third law. Newton observed that the acceleration is directly proportional to force applied on the mass and later he found out that the, the, the constant of proportionality is inverse of the mass. So this observation helped him to come to our equation. Similarly, we are having some observation that energy is being spread out. So our task is to get to our equation that will help our analysis, that will make the whole, whole, whole dealing with any kind of process more simpler. Suppose if someone asks me that uh, why this process is not occurring, why a cold cup of tea not become hot on its own. They can, I can define a number, suppose I define a quantity A. I can say that see, look, this quantity A, which is supposed to give you an idea of whether a process is spontaneous or not, is having a negative number, is having a negative value. And hence, it's not spontaneous. For this process, the value of A is positive. So it's spontaneous. So rather than dealing with this abstract observation, if we can get to something concrete and deal with a quantity the, on whose value will be dependent the spontaneity or non-spontaneity, then the whole analysis, the whole thing will look, look more simpler and more easy. And that's the goal. And the goal of life like, is to find out big ideas that describe how the world works, to understand why and how things happen around us in terms of a small number of basic principles. Principles that can be tested, that can be checked. Now, and this, in this attempt, you can't do better than second law of thermodynamics because second law of thermodynamics, although, as we'll see, will boil down to a very small mathematical equation, but that will become the basis of the analysis of any kind of process in this universe that you can think of. Okay, so, so in this, uh, in this attempt to build up a mathematical form of all these observations, let's move ahead.